Welcome to the Calisthenics Insider Podcast. Today's guest is the Masked Mediator, an interview guest I didn't know much about and I didn't know what to expect from this interview, but it turned out to be a really valuable, inspirational interview about his workout routine, his life, his goals, and a lot of useful information. On 1st of November 2023, we celebrated our 8th anniversary and I want to say thank you to everyone celebrating with us with new clothing and being part of the journey for such a long time. If you're looking for the timestamps, you can find them here on the screen and also in the description so you can jump to the topic that is interesting you and now let's jump into the interview as i said welcome to the show thank you for joining in uh mass mediator is the guest today and i'm super looking forward to this interview to someone who is uh, special already with his appearance we never had someone who is uh, hiding his face uh, in the <laughs> interview and i'm super looking forward to get to know more about you and your yeah my mentality of your yes uh, yeah thank you for having me actually a fun fact when i have breakfast normally i like to put on a podcast and listen to something and roughly a year ago or a year and a half ago um, i've listened to a couple of your podcasts uh specifically with max true i think you've done two with him mm -hmm. and then the other was ian barzigo and yeah i wouldn't have thought that after a year year and a half i'll be on this side doing the interview as well um, so yeah, it's a great honor, great privilege. So yes, thank you for having me. Nice. Yeah, happy to hear. That's uh, super cool. And yeah, let's start with the question that burns in my, I don't know, in my <laughs> head so much. Why do you wear a mask? Why are you are not sitting in front of me like, like a normal human being? Like a let's normal call it. person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I mean, when I started this whole social media thing, I kind of started it for fun and um, I did it because I was training calisthenics anyway, and I thought to myself, I'm going to keep progressing and improving. I don't do any of this stuff for social media or anything. I'm going to keep doing this. Well, I might as well record it, put it on social media and perhaps get something out of it in the long run. Um, that's why I started the whole social media part just for fun. Um, but then I looked at other content creators, other influencers, and it was like, well, there are plenty of other fitness guys. There are plenty of other calisthenics guys. And a lot of them can be much stronger than me. They can do things that I can't do, etc. Uh, very impressive. It's like, what, what's the whole point of me just fitting in and doing the same thing as everyone else? Let me try and do something different. So then I was like, all right, cool. Why don't I, um, you know, pop on a mask and remain anonymous and we'll see how that goes. In fact, the first mask I would wear, it was the um, that one, so the black one from Squid Game. Uh, but the problem with that one was it's uh, quite hard plastic, uh, so I can't actually breathe through it. It's very difficult, man. Uh, so eventually, the idea evolved from not just wearing one mask, but just keeping anonymous overall, so wearing anything. And obviously, what I'm wearing now is a bit better because it's cloth, so it's a bit more breathable. Yeah, so that was one of the one of the reasons it was just to you know have some sort of innovation do something different the other part is actually quite funny the second reason um so <laughs> when i was 17 um just like any other guy you kind of go through a stage where you want to pack on some muscle you want to build some muscle start watching youtube uh in order to learn from tutorials on how to do certain exercises and all these guys i would watch i don't know why but for whatever reason uh, they really like to take off their shirt. Like, for example, I don't, I get it. If you're working out or you're showing how to do the specific workout, okay, fair enough. And I understand that you need to show people uh, what your training programs produce. Understandable. But these motherfuckers, sometimes they'll be drawing, in, they'll be like inside, they'll be explaining something on the whiteboard and their whole body is just exposed. I was like, it doesn't, I don't want to be one of these people. I think one of them was like um, Athlean X, he pops to mind. Um, so yeah, he, that's the type of thing that he constantly does. Um, so yeah, so I was like, oh, I don't really want to be like those guys. I know I'm going to have to take off my shirt for, so people understand what my training does, etc. So hiding my face helped in that aspect because then it's like, well, they, they don't even know who I am, so it's okay. So yeah, I didn't want to come across as arrogant or cocky. Like, oh, look at me, this is me, etc. cetera. Uh, it's like, nah, uh, that doesn't really matter. And then the third reason is, well, this reason kind of came after my social media blew up. 
and that is that it gives me quite a lot of privacy uh which is i think really nice like no matter how many followers i get or how many views etc my life will stay exactly the same i wake up the same time i go on public transport no issues i work out at the same spot no one bothers me there are people that know about my social media uh, but it's not a big circle of people it's no, normally just like friends or close friends in terms of yeah privacy and not getting too big headed because if you're I have friends that have like 100k on Instagram and if they go to a gym there will be some people coming up to them and talking to them etc and when you have that constantly going it can kind of get into your head I think uh but luckily I don't actually have to deal with that I can just be my own self essentially but yeah those are I think the top 3 reasons on why I remain anonymous but still with your tattoo uh, if i'm if i'm right because you also do a lot of uh, shirtless um videos um and people could identify you with with the shirt so if you're working out somewhere you're not recording so i guess you will have your mask off you will not be able to work out shirtless because people will say oh i know this tattoo yes you're completely right so i don't take my shirt off if i'm not recording it's very rare it's actually funny <laughs> i had a bit of a rough day yesterday and it was late in the evening it was like 9:30 p.m. and i was going to do my dip workout really didn't want to do it but i got my shit done and in in the middle of the workout i was like yeah fuck it i'm taking off my shirt i took it off uh but because it was so late there's not many people like there's barely any people walking past uh but there was one guy that came around and he recognized me but he was a nice guy and he didn't um like he wasn't going to go and take pictures of me of me and like leak me or anything like that Uh, but yeah you're absolutely right normally the only way you can really recognize me is through my tattoo i'd say there have been times where i have been recognized just from no mask clothes on etc um there was this one occasion where i was doing dips again and uh, a couple of kids came to me and it was after my workout they came up to me like oh man is this you and they showed me their phone and it's me doing dips on instagram and i just froze and I'm like for 2 3 seconds i'm like i don't really like to lie a lot so i wasn't going to say no but i was like yeah it's me can you please keep it under cover they understood they nodded and then it just went away um but yeah the tattoo does identify me out say perhaps yeah. in case if someone's doubting yes it's the real me here <laughs> <laughs> not true yeah i didn't even think about it but yeah it could yeah, be yeah, yeah. Could, could be, be someone else could be an actor for all you know <laughs> interesting so uh yeah what what does the tattoo mean is it something special uh is it something like what's the meaning behind it yeah so i'm not sure have you watched the movie undisputed by any chance i don't think so yeah so if there i wish there was a deeper meaning behind it but <laughs> essentially one of the so when i was growing up i think i was 13 14 um there was this one movie i quite liked and i watched it i have a twin we watched it together uh it's <laughs> it's about MMA in prison <laughs> and there was this one fighter called Yuri Boyka and um he had the exact same chest tattoo and i tried to find the meaning of it for quite a while like i searched the internet and did everything like that but i didn't come across specific definition um and i only really got it because he had it so that's really it it's just from a character from a movie that i thought was cool when i was younger and i was like i got it when i was 18 why not But yeah. Okay. You said something interesting. You have a twin and um yeah. For me, uh like my my cousins are twins. I have a lot of friends who are twins and uh, for them what I saw is like always the 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 wish to to be to stand out, you know, like because you always have have a brother or a sister who is like um quite like you um does it also play together with your with your mission in general to to stand out to do something different to go go against the stream um of things mm. that's an interesting point in terms of twins you really get two types of twins so you get mm -hmm. the twins that get along very well and mm -hmm. they're like best friends and they love each <laughs> other they're always together and then you get the twins that absolutely despise each other so unfortunately me and my twin are a bit on the second half We're not the bestest of friends. Um, yeah, like when we were younger, we'd fight all the time, <laughs> all the time, man. We would do some crazy stuff. At times, like I remember, we would go and we would just spit at each other. That's like the most disrespectful thing you can do to a person is just spit in their face. So that's literally what we do sometimes. If someone, if he annoyed you, you'd go up to him, you spit in his face, uh, and then he would do the same back, and we'd just go crazy. 
Um, we look like siblings, but we're not the same. Um, and the thing you've mentioned about standing out is very true. So I think one, one mistake that parents tend to make when they have twins is they, um, they dress them exactly the same. And it's like, when you're a twin, you share so much things, so many, not characteristics, but features with this person. And you kind of want to be different. You don't want to be the same. And then when your parents buy you the same clothes, they're kind of promoting that. So yes, when we were growing up, we always wanted to do different things. In fact, it came down to things like, let's say we're watching a movie. So my twin is a bit older than me, like I think 10, 15 minutes. We're watching a movie. Let's say it's like Spider-Man. So my twin, he gets first pick because he's older. He gets to pick first who he's going to support in the movie. He always likes to go for Spider-Man, the superhero. Who do I have left? I have to go and support the villain now. And that sucked because the guy never won. My guy <laughs> never won. It was, it's so sad to see. I remember thinking like any movie you watch, I'm like, I felt so sorry for these guys. It's like, bro, I'm literally rooting for you. Can you just win at least one time? But yeah, the conclusion is always the same. The superhero wins. Or even football, football matches. If he supports one team, I have to go and support the other team. You can't just support the same thing. Has that had an impact on the way I do things now? Um, I haven't really thought about that, to be honest. Um, I wouldn't think so, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, the way I look at it is just, if people are going to consume content or whatever else you're doing, um, if it's not different to what already exists, why on earth would they uh, go and invest in you or watch your content? Um, it would, it just wouldn't make sense. Um, so it has to be, something has to be different. Cause I see like a, an attribute of, um, many, not all, but many successful people may it be in, in sports, may it be in, 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 in life in general, in business, whatever, uh, is that they are not afraid or that they even search for going against the mainstream and, um, mm. These are the people who are mostly also um, motivated by negative things. Let's say uh, someone who I really respected back in the days in 2016, something told me, hey, it's impossible to build a clothing brand in calisthenics. I tried it myself. It's impossible because people are really, they don't have a lot of money. They are, it's young people. They are not looking for high quality clothing. They are like more mm. cheaper um, things. And for a second, it demotivated me. But then I thought, damn, I will show you, I will prove you wrong. And it was like, um, it was like this, really this uh, going against the, the, the opinions of the, the mass or of the, the others and this yeah, is what i when you when you talk you know it reminds me of this this mentality of uh you know it's cold but i will work out anyways i didn't you didn't <laughs> feel like working out yesterday but you still did it so kind of going against the what feels natural or what feels uh yeah normal normal uh, going against normal <laughs> yeah man yeah people yeah there's always going to be people who are going to be against it even for me Probably when I went to my first few competitions, people were thinking like, why has this guy got a mask on? Do you think he's gangster or something? Like, what's going on? Take it off. But it's like, I didn't care to the point where I didn't even, I didn't even know if people were saying this, but I'm sure they were. Um, cause like they don't see the vision. They don't understand where it could go. So yeah, you just got to block them out and like, you got, you do your own thing. I'll do my own thing. And. Yeah, but explain to us the vision. Really, it's for, even for me, and I always try to be like without prejudges. But everybody has something in her his head, which is like just pre-programmed um, uh, things of the past. And even for me, it's super weird, and I didn't understand why do you wear a mask? Why <laughs> you're you're inspiring so many people? Also, like in your Instagram, etc. There are many people um, who you really inspire, but. For me, it's not understandable how you do like the personal development. You listen to podcasts, you know, you work on yourself. But on the other hand, you you hide yourself and show other people or like, I don't know, are you not proud of yourself? You know, like, why, why don't you show yourself from even for me? <laughs> I don't understand. What is the what is the vision? I mean, I think most of our, the work that we do, it depends on the situation. But it kind of get, for me anyway, all the stuff I do pretty much all by myself all my training and most people they look at my instagram <laughs> they think i just do push-ups they think i'm some meathead nah man i'm just like max true i'm a computer scientist uh i'm at university 
I did the best in my school in my year group. So when I was 16, um, I got the best GCSE results. The highest grade you can get was a nine. I got all nines with the exception of three subjects where I got two eights and one seven. And then when I did my A-levels, which is exams which you, when you're 18, normal students do three subjects. I did five subjects in my first year. Second year, I did, I dropped to four uh, and got A-stars in every single one, which is the top grade you can get. I'm not saying this to be like, oh, look at me, I'm so smart, etc. cetera. Nah, I'm saying this. You can do both. You can be both academic and you can be uh, an athlete. And sometimes it's it's very difficult and it's very rare to see these type of people. And sometimes, let's say I have like a very good training session where I pushed myself very hard and I go to the classroom. Most of the day I spend studying. So I go into my computer lab or the library and I start thinking to myself, I'm not even a nerd. I'm an athlete. I shouldn't be here. And then I'm like, hold on. What's Max Strew doing? He's a software engineer and he does his reps and he has a world record. Do you remember these people like this? And then you go and you do your shit. Same thing can happen. Let's say I did a, wrote some very good code. Everything worked. I feel proud of myself. I go to the park and I'm like, oh, I'm not even, I'm not even an athlete. I'm like, bro, I'm a software engineer. I should be doing stuff like this. Everyone in my labs, they're small. They're frail. I shouldn't be like this. But no, you remember. You remember the other people and you, you get it done. But in terms of the vision that you mentioned, it's like, I saw the potential of an account such as myself doing well on social media because it, it like a guy, no one knows who he is and he's doing hundreds of repetitions. I thought it may have potential. That's why I did it. And yeah, as I said, like most of the work that you do, in my opinion, it goes unnoticed. That's the whole mass mentality meaning really. Yeah, doing stuff. And it doesn't matter if you get recognition for it or not because at the end of the day, you're kind of just doing it for yourself. Yeah, that's what I would say. Okay, so summarize and correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. The mass mentality is to show, uh, to, of course, you, you, you have to post something. So you can't have every work unnoticed. You have to share something to show that you are doing something. Mass mentality is you, you develop a discipline and work ethic, but it does not matter if it goes unnoticed. But to be honest, most people will... People will see you in the classroom. People will see you in the park. They'll see you working hard, sweating, etc. So they will notice eventually. But it's like, it doesn't matter. You can just do, do it all by yourself in your quiet way if you want to. You don't have to be going around telling people everything you're doing. Because what's that going to do? It's not going to move you forward in any way. Okay, so you built um, the, the image of the mass mediator who is like um, super strong in endurance calisthenics, who is doing push-ups crazy, you know, but you are not dependent on pe uh, on people knowing that it's you personally. You don't have yeah. to say, hey, it's me uh, yeah. who did all this. You, you don't care and you just hide behind a mask because you're not dependent on their recognition. Is it that? Yes, yes, precisely. Yeah, Okay. that's Good. correct. Now I understand because... I don't know. Yeah, 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 as I said, like uh, a lot of images come pop up in my head. I think uh, also like older people, if they see you uh, with the mask, etc., they will think, "Damn, what is this guy <laughs> doing?" I don't think he's a good, um, uh, uh, idol. a good civilian. Yeah, 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 good civilian. You know. <laughs> yeah, but this this makes sense. A lot of people as well. You tell me, did you did you expect me to be like this? No, I thought no. I, I really. I, <laughs> I, I'm like always preparing mentally for every interview and most of the athletes I know personally before. Uh, but we like if you check our Instagram chat, there is not one message we, we exchanged. We like we both <laughs> we never had touch in our lives. Um, and even yeah. the, the, the organization for this interview did not take place through you. So um, this is why yeah. I was I didn't know anything no what is happening. Most people, they look at my stuff and they think I'm some aggressive, aggressive Russian dude. With plenty of energy. There's no energy, man. There's no <laughs> energy. It's all filtered out. Even this morning, I got up at fucking um, six thirty. I do normally open open water swimming in the morning, so I go and swim in cold water. All my energy is left there. There's a time and place for aggression, and it's all left there. So during the day, of course, I'm going to be at peace. Of course, I'm, I'm going to be restful. 
Um, yeah, that's another thing that people don't get, <laughs> which is quite funny to me. They think I'm some sort of monster. It's like, nah, man. I've I've get, I've I've left all my stuff in the park. I've left my stuff in the lake. Tell us about this um, this work, this mental work that you do. Um, you said that you're yeah actively working on yourself. You you leave, uh, let's say, your demons in the in the lake or in the, in the park. <laughs> um, can you tell us more about it? How you get to this point, to this um, yeah. moment of feeling that this is important? Oh, that's a good question. Well, how did I get to this feeling important? I think I'll start off by um, describing my routine. So. Um, I pretty much live the same day every single day with the exception of a Sunday. So I wake up at seven, I go swim uh, all, all year round. I hate the cold water. Fucking hate it, man. Sometimes I wake up, <laughs> I have a, a window right next, right by my side, right next to my, my bed. I open the curtains. Sometimes we don't get much snow in London. Sometimes there's fucking snow. There's condensation dripping down my window. And I'm like all nice and tucked in into my, my warm covers. I don't want to go and swim in the fucking lake. No way. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Oh, man, it gets so tough sometimes. But I drag myself out. I go swim. Normally then I come back, have breakfast around nine. From then on, I start studying uh, or doing some sort of coding. My studying uh, technique is quite simple. I study five clean hours a day. And what I mean by clean hours is I time every single hour. So I have a stopwatch. If someone, one of my friends comes and distracts me, I stop the stopwatch and I start it again. So I study in 50, minute, 50 minutes I work, 10 minutes I rest. Do that three times, then one hour for lunch and another three times and then that's the end of the day. Uh, so I very much work by time. Then I have my evening workout at seven, uh, which is the calisthenics workout. Um, and then I get home around by nine, have dinner and then go to bed at 10.30 is my normal bedtime. And then on a Sunday, I do everything the same, but uh, I don't do the studying or the coding during the day. So it's more of a day off. In terms of how did I get to this point? That's a very, that is a very deep question. <laughs> <laughs> I can start off by going back to a uh, part of my childhood. So one of the toughest things I faced when I was um, in my life, it was actually when I was 14. Um, so for context, I went to a normal state school, so a very normal school. Um, in terms of my um, the income of my family, it's uh, so my dad works, my mom doesn't work at all, um, and there's, it's quite a big family, so it's six people overall. I have a twin and two sisters, uh, so it's four people. We lived, currently I live alone, but back then we lived in a two-bedroom flat. It was very packed. I lived in the same room as my brother for 18 years. It was not nice. Um, I didn't like living with my parents at all. It was very tough. Like, I have a very strict dad. I got my first smartphone when I was 18 years old, for example. Like, that's just one thing. There's many other things I can go into. Uh, but what happened was I was going to a normal school. And when I was 14, my parents found some money from my grandparents. My grandparents donated some money, uh, which allowed us to go to a private school. A private school is one that you pay for and the people that go there are a bit different in terms of socioeconomic status. Mm -hmm. So I, w I went from this normal school with my normal friends to this private school with like I had, I'm not going to name any names, but I had a son of a celebrity go and this celebrity is like, you would see this celebrity on like adverts in the, in the tube or on the bus. It was nuts. Mm -hmm. um, so it was very much quite wealthy people and it meant that I didn't really feel the same around them I couldn't really make much friends with them because I don't know perhaps it was a respect aspect or something like that but it just didn't feel like my my spot don't get me wrong over time I developed some nice friendships uh, but it meant that I still kind of felt some distance what that meant um, I was kind of socially isolated and one of my biggest fear well it was people from what I've read before, it was the biggest fear that people have is loneliness and public speaking. And those are the two of my biggest fears. Uh, so loneliness was one of them. And because of this social, I became a bit of an outcast. It meant I had quite a lot of time for myself where I was all alone. And I didn't really have anything to do. I was like, okay, I felt 
an urge to prove these guys wrong that no matter how rich your parents are or how well off you are me a guy from a council estate i'm still going to beat you so then what what i started doing i was 14 i started um after school studying two to three hours uh after school every day and slowly i started getting better and what happened during the holidays is these guys would all hang out together um but i didn't even have a phone so i didn't hang out with anyone um uh, so what happened what i started doing is developing these routines where i'd go and i'd time every single part of my day and i'll include a workout and then the rest of the time i'll probably be studying mostly and i'll execute these routines and sometimes the thing is people normally they get ready for an exam for or some event i wasn't getting ready for an exam i was just trying to challenge myself we had um, i remember i think i was 15 and or yes i was 15 and we had a whole year before an exam but i was already studying for it i was already revising the material we just covered i was ready to sit the exam any at any point i discovered that click that the more you the more you work the more likely you're to achieve shit you you get an output so then i was like okay cool so i'm just going to keep doing this and at times it got really really tough like um i'm sure i've reached the burnt out stage many times when i was in school like it was crazy like i'd wake up everything would feel gray monotone or actions between is this going to be painful or is this not going to pay- be painful going to the shops oh that seems long that seems painful i don't want to do that uh, you know i i've been at times where it's like i've done so much work and it's like i just want to cry and i'm like why the fuck do i want to cry like i'm not hurt by someone i'm just very isolated uh very lonely but it was crazy and sometimes i would drop a few tears like in the shower here and there but yeah it was very tough um but that's where the work ethic was kind of discovered uh the discipline it was just all by myself and sometimes it just it, it sucked so bad yeah cuz i think it's much easier to do something like together you know humans are very social creatures um so when you're all there by yourself it definitely gets difficult yeah and then i just kept going and going and going um and yeah the workouts got harder and harder the studying gave result as well and yeah it's the same stuff i'm doing now like the uh, routines they're pretty much the same <laughs> i'm still doing them yeah you discover the work is done all by yourself yeah that's how i kind of discovered it. it was due to social isolation for me and i think the story is again a proof for that is everything about channeling the energy right so some people might use this energy to do something destructive you do uh, you use it uh to do something productive to um yeah build the best version of yourself to create a, a movement of it to create a community of it uh, even maybe a business you know but um like you use it for yourself instead of against yourself or someone else and i think this is uh, what people need to understand that everybody goes in life through different difficult phases that everybody has the demons to fight but it's all about channeling the energy into the right direction and using it for you Sure. Interesting. So um yeah, maybe you can tell us more about your workout style. Like how do you work out? How 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 is your workout today? Yeah, I mean, even if you go on social media now, you get a bunch of these guys that are like, "Oh, this is the most efficient way to hit this muscle group. And you have to do these five exercises and this and that." For me, normally for a workout, I do two exercises. That's it. So if I have a push day, I'm doing dips and push-ups. That's it. You don't have to be a an Einstein for this stuff. <laughs> If you just take your muscles to fucking failure. If your kneecaps are shaking after your leg day, your legs will grow. Like it will just happen. They will grow. So for me it's a um, quite high rep endurance um I would imagine like many other uh calisthenics endurance athletes. So yeah, it's normally just two exercises. I do max sets. So the max sets are the ones that max sets are the ones that fucking suck. So for example yesterday one thing I've I'm training is my dips because one day um in fact when I was listening to your podcast and Max Stewart was talking about his world records I was like damn what if I get a world record one day <laughs> and I'm like okay that thought it kind of lingered at the back of my head and it kept on um, coming back um so then I was like 
okay, well, let me pick a, an exercise. I ended up picking dips because um, there's not that many other athletes that do dips. So I thought perhaps I have a chance there. So yeah, even yesterday, the workout was max dips first set and then sets of 15 with 30 second rest until 1000. So the first set is the is the one that fucking sucks, man. Because you're going to be, you're going to deep waters <laughs> and you're drowning yourself. Like for the dips, the pain is coming. The pain is going to be in my chest, my triceps, my shoulders go- is going to feel like it's about to fucking pop. Everything, <laughs> like, I just want to let go of those bars and just hit the floor. And it, the mm-hmm. thing is, I can just do that. So before these max sets, I normally sit down and I take um, a couple of minutes to try and um, think back to either emotional wounds or something that has hurt me in the past and bring it up. So it could be anything. It could be like you've broken up with your girlfriend Perhaps your best friend betrayed you or something like this, whatever it is. You br- I try to bring it up and um, use that for adrenaline. So it reawakens me. Get the adrenaline rush, go into the set. And then um, when you get to those deep water reps where you're about, you're almost about to, your arms are about to give out. Um, I tend not to think about anything. I just think about the, the next rep or the next five reps. Uh, that's another thing. Like, don't think about... The whole set, like, for example, if you have a target of doing 140 dips, don't think about if you've done 70, well, I've got another 70 to go. Nah, just think about it in fives. You just do it in fives um, and go from there. So, yeah, in terms of my training style, it's normally a max set in the beginning of a specific exercise. And then I'll do supersets of that exercise until I reach a certain number. So, for example, for pull-ups, it will be max pull-up for the first set. And then all the other sets would be 10 pull-ups, 10 Australian pull-ups, one minute rest, 10, 10, keep going until I get roughly to 300 uh, in total. But yeah, that's my style. It was largely um, influenced by a guy I met at the park. So that's another story I can tell how I kind of got into calisthenics in the first place. Um, So the way I kind of got into it was when I was 17, as I mentioned before, I started wanting to gain muscle and I started doing resistance training. So I did. Uh, gym I hit the weights but then some of my exercises would be calisthenics so at that point I trained some pull-ups some push-ups etc and I did that for one year and then I remember I think it was sometime in the winter I hopped on my bike and I I saw loads of these guys doing freestyle on YouTube doing calisthenics I was like oh that's pretty cool let me see where the closest park is Um, so I went to the park and at the time I just learned a pullover so yeah that was like I, I, I thought I'm I'm a beast. I knew how to do a pullover. I finally <laughs> got it. Uh, so I came to this part and I did a couple of pullovers feeling like a, a, I'm a beast. And then in my peripheral vision, I can see there's this one guy in a hoodie and he's just, just in the corner, just in the dark. He's just doing push-ups, and he just keep doing them and keep doing, keep doing. And I take, I take more notice and it's like, he's there for a, for a long fucking time. I'm like, okay, interesting. I want to, I want to speak to this guy. I remember I was a bit nervous going to approach him. Uh, and thank God I got over that uh, because it turned out the person. Uh, so I, I went up to him. I asked him, yo, bro, like, how many did you do? And he just uh, answered with a straight face. He's like, oh, that was 100. I'm like, damn, that's like a big number. To me mm-hmm. at the time, that seemed like a big number. I was like, damn, that's a lot. Um, he's like, nah, bro, be serious. And then he just goes back and c- continues doing his stuff. Uh, it turned out I was talking to Kess, so he's another influencer. I think his Instagram is Kess underscore K underscore. Um, so, yeah, so this guy is huge. This guy is able to perform 1,000 push-ups in one set uh, without dropping. I don't know if you've come across him online. Um, but, yeah, I think you guys should do an interview as well. He's a I love that guy. Um, so, yeah, so he was like a living proof for me that you can – during doing just reps you can build a muscular body um and that kind of stayed at the back of my mind i went back to my normal training but it was kind of always there it was always there because i also knew calisthenics mentally in my opinion endurance calisthenics is more tough because it takes you more time to get to that uh failure uh it's more painful in my opinion um so i kept kept thinking back to that and what the, it's funny, what the tilting point was, uh, the final snap. <laughs> Man, this feels so stupid. Uh, but 
I remember I was working my first job and I had a crush on this girl. Um, and we talked, whatever, uh, things seemed to be going well. But at the end of it, I just got rejected outright. And that hurt me a lot. I don't know why, but it hurt me a lot. And all I wanted to do was just suffer. I just wanted to train. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. All this weights and stuff, it can go and be in the gym. I'm just going to go outside and do this crazy workout. Um, and that's when I, I kind of made the full switch to only body weight training. Uh, it's a bit of a, <laughs> looking bad at a stupid reason. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's just the way it happened. Um, I forgot where I'm going with this. Um, that Yeah, that's how I started. Um, ah, yes. And Kess, so I have mentioned before, I'm good friends with him. I bump into him in the park all the time. And because I, I one of the reasons why I started social media was I saw him doing it. So I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Might as well do my own thing as well. Um, so if I, if I didn't meet him, I wouldn't have started my social media accounts. And I look up to him quite a lot. He's like a big role model to me. Um, even like, I feel like when, when us people, we go through a tough time, there's, if we're lucky, there's a group of people that we can think of. And for some reason, we know that if we speak to them, they'll have some sort of an answer of how to get through the things we're going through. And he's one of those people for me. I remember when I was, um, so as I mentioned, I was, I have a strict dad. Um, and one time my dad was like, all right, we're doing a curfew for 9 p.m. So if you come back after 9 p.m., I don't know if you have the same lock, but you can, um, you can turn a switch on so that even if you have the key, you can't get in from the outside. Um, so he said at 9 p.m., you can't get in. And I remember I had, I was studying all day and I had a couple of events with some society work I do at university. Um, and then I hit a leg workout and I came home at 9.15 and this guy locked the door uh, and that bothered me. And my phone was out of battery as well. So I had to go, uh, I was hungry. <laughs> I wanted to get food. Um, in the end, my mom talked to my dad and they let me back in. Um, but still that moment, it, it just annoyed me. And I remember I was like, yeah, I just have to go speak to Kess. I wonder how his parents were with him. And that's exactly what I did. Um, so yeah, so he's had a big influence on my training style. Um, that's why it mostly consists of reps. Um, yeah, that's why I do max sets because I saw him doing max sets of push-ups, and that sort of like translated, I guess. Nice. So for the week, uh, you said um, push-ups and dips, uh, like dips and push-ups is uh, the the push day. Can you go through the schedule yeah. for the week? Yeah. So the way I do it is I have a push pull legs day. Mm -hmm. so i work three days on one day off my morning my either in the morning i do swimming outdoors or i go for a run um right now i have an injury so i can't do any running um unfortunately i overworked my tendon i think it's uh Achilles tendonitis but it's healing up quite quickly which is nice uh, so i just do the swimming and then in the evenings it's push full legs and then one day rest push full legs one day rest so for push, it's normally push-ups and dips, um, or sometimes it's just dips. Um, for legs, it's squats and calf raises, um, 500 reps on each. Um, and then for pull-ups, it's pull-ups and Australian pull-ups. So yeah, as you can see, there's not much variation. <laughs> um, sometimes I do muscle-ups as well. Um, I alternate each week, but yeah, it's like... Same stuff over and over again. I try to get a PR in my max sets. And then every few months, I increase the whole volume or the intensity by like lowering, lowering rest time or increasing reps per set, etc. Uh, yeah, those are the tough times when you have to increase everything. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. I can't be able to do this. For, um, but yeah. Interesting. What is the reason for the calf raises? Because calves are the, the ultimate uh, front lever, planche, killer, whatever. <laughs> I don't see a lot of uh, athletes, uh, calisthenics athletes uh, working on calves. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I mean, they're just part of the legs. So I thought for the leg day, you know, you have to try and hit the whole leg. You can't just hit the top part. Um, that's why I do the calf raises. I don't train statics at all. I can do a handstand on parallel bars 
uh, because I used to find that fun. But nowadays, because of the swimming, um, I used to do some statics in the morning, but not now. Um, I think it's fun. I don't think it's as tough as endurance. No disrespect to all the other static guys out there. Um, can be fun, but I'm not here. I'm not here to have fun, man. I'm here to get my shit in. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, uh, not my vibe, I guess. Interesting. And uh, yeah, tell us about the swimming. The um, yeah, is it also man. just because of discomfort, or also like the health yeah, benefits? Like, yeah. So um, the swimming, cold water. Oh man, <laughs> it has been my enemy for the last year. I've been doing this for roughly a year, maybe just over. Um, so there's a swimming club in London where you're allowed to swim in the Serpentine, which I'm part of. Um, so I am allowed to do this. I don't want people just going and jumping in lakes and then it turns out it's like the water's toxic or something. Uh, so yeah, don't do that. Um, but yeah, I remember the way I got into it. One of my friends, his mom was part of this club and uh, he mentioned it to me. And I was thinking, swimming in cold water, that's quite badass, bro. Like in the winter as well. Like that's crazy. Imagine the guy, he goes, does his reps and then he goes and swims in the fucking lake in the morning as well. Um, yeah, and I was like, okay, well, let's see if you can do this. Um, and I started doing it bit by bit i wouldn't swim a crazy distance i remember when i just started i would literally just swim 50 meters and that's it um so it's not really much about the swimming it's about the cold water much tougher to swim in cold water your body goes numb it goes stiff um it's not nice um there have been times where in the first winter so the first so right now it's what october the first winter i had I found it tough, man. Like, this stuff will wake me up during the night. <laughs> I wake up during the night because it bothered me. Um, I was restless. I couldn't sleep. I was like, at 7 a.m. or 6.30, I'm going to have to wake up and get cold. No way. No way. I don't want to do this shit. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it'll haunt me. It'll haunt me for a few nights. Uh, but eventually, as you get the habit, um, you go and uh, it becomes a bit easier going to the place, so it's a bit less dreadful, but getting in the water will still suck. I remember one day, there was, there's only really one day I think I fully gave up, where I was like, nah, I'm not going just because I don't want to. Um, I remember that day, and that just got so deep. Um, I remember I rewatched my childhood. Um, I remember when I was 15, I really liked the first movie of Creed. Um, so I rewatched that, had some nostalgia, really thought about my life, <laughs> went to a deep place because it felt <laughs> weird just like just having the inability. I was just fully in defeat. Um, it didn't feel good. I remember I cried a bit as well. Like I just, it didn't make sense to me. Um, it was like, nah, man, can't, can't be defeated. And I remember the next morning I was, I couldn't wait for the next morning because it would have meant that I can go in the water and win. I can be victorious again. Um, so I woke up in the morning and normally to get to the lake, I go by tube and then I run from the tube stop to the lake. Um, it's a very quick five to 10 minute run. And as I'm running, um, I pass a part of the lake as I'm running and I'm talking to it. I'm like, oh shit. It's you again. Oh, guess what? I'm back. And this, today I'm going to get in and you can't do nothing about it. I'll go and I'll personify it. I'll personify it. I'm talking to that motherfucker. Um, so yeah, and I got in. I did my shit. Um, but yeah, I do recommend cold water. Um, you do have to pay the... So cold water, I as I mentioned, I listen to quite a lot of podcasts when I eat. And... Um, one of the ones I listened to was, I think it was Cold Exposure by Andrew Huberman. I just came across it and everything he was saying, it was exactly the same as what I was feeling. Um, it was crazy. Uh, and he goes over a lot of the impacts it has on your dopamine system and et cetera. And um, I feel like because of this cold exposure, as of now, um, I didn't really get burnt out. Like I can continue doing my routine and uh stick to my pace and not go to 
uh, to shambles or a dark dark place it's like I can just keep grinding basically um but it's still it's still tough even this morning man woke up I was meant to wake up at seven I woke up at four I was <laughs> awake at, we had rain it was raining I was like I don't want to do this shit went back to bed woke up at 6 30 again I was like you know what I'm gonna be on this podcast with Phil I can't go on a podcast and start talking about anything when I haven't done my shit so I got up and and went and did my stuff. Um, but yeah, I do highly recommend it to people. And if you can't go and swim in the lake, perhaps try cold showers. Go time yourself. Try to stay there under for five minutes. Increase it to ten minutes. Um, yeah, it's a it's a good thing in my opinion. Super interesting because uh, just this weekend, uh, like uh, our, our my good friend uh, Daniel Flayfield, he's also a big fan of uh, like cold exposure and uh, swimming in or like uh, just uh, ice bath and in Swedish uh, lakes where he has to break the ice before getting in. So um, also like crazy things and um, um, yeah. I, I, this is why I read a lot about it. And this weekend we also bought a, like a, a big tub for the balcony to fill it with water and to do the um, uh, ice, ice bathing uh, in the winter. Um, the thing with the ice bathing, I think the studies say it's good for recovery, right? It, it, uh, mm. it, it uh, quickens up like being sore. It shortens the time that you're sore and you recover much quicker, but um, it's, it's uh, like, hot showers and hot therapy in general is good because it um, lets the muscle be sore but uh, is better for muscle growth so cold um, cold exposure is um, better for recovery but worse for muscle muscle growth and uh, hot therapy is better for muscle growth but less for um, recovery so this is what the the studies say i think and mm -hmm. um this is why I'm always doubting, you know, do I want to recover quicker or do I want to build more muscle um, and like have, have more strength in the end? Um, but do you think about these things or is it just, nah, I, I, want... I don't okay. care, bro. <laughs> I just got, I just got to go prove a point yeah. on myself, really. Um, so yeah. Yeah, it doesn't cross my mind at all. Because afraid. there are even like more efficient, there are, there might be people saying after this interview, there are more efficient ways to work out. There are more efficient ways to, to, to recover, you know, <laughs> than to go into the lake. But it's, this is not your focus, right? This it's, is not about efficiency, bro. Yeah, yeah. When you get in that cold water, your, your, no genetics is going to help you, man. <laughs> When, the push ups don't care, man. They don't care about anything. They're still going to hurt. It does not matter. It does not matter at all when you're studying and it's like the last 10 minutes and you just want to quit and go talk to your friends. No efficiency, no fucking genetics. Nothing's going to help you, bro. So, yeah, it's, it's not my vibe, I guess. <laughs> But, yeah. yeah. But that, that's super interesting. And I, I with this this interview, I understand more and more your uh, your mentality and how, how you see life. And um, what do you think? What what is your goal? If you if we do this interview, what do you want people to take with them after the, uh, hearing this, and That's after your your years of learning now? <clears throat> That's a good question. I mean, a lot of people. Um, everyone's going through some sort of struggle. At the end of the day, we're all people. Stuff happens. Um, and what I found for me is, like, people. I think when they go to my account there's a lot of people that are either out of shape or in a tough spot or depressed, etc. cetera. Um, what I found, what can help with this? First of all, is your room fucking clean? Go and clean your room. Make sure everything is tidy uh, so that when you come back, everything, everything's laid out. Um, sort out your sleep. Whenever you go, go to bed, same time you go to bed, same time you wake up. Of course, some days it, it can happen where it's a bit later, but um, try and stick to that. Start training and start training hard. S start push. Start trying to push to your limits. It's very difficult and it sucks and I hate it. I don't even like talking about it either because I know this fucking evening, it's fucking leg day. I'm going to have to whip out my vest and start doing <laughs> squats. I don't want to do that again. No way. But get it done. It's only an hour a day. Okay, you're not going to die right um yeah just do these things if you have any other goals write out a plan that's what has worked for me write out a routine um and 
try to stick with it. From my experience, the first three days or the first week are normally the toughest. Um, yeah, it's a full out war. It's a full out war. The first couple of days, like you don't want to stick to those hours. You want to do whatever you normally do. That's what your habit is. You're, you're fighting your brain. You're trying to change the neural pathways in your brain, your, your little habits. Um, and if it means that you have to study for an hour and you've done 50 minutes and it's 10 minutes left and you just can't focus at all, just sit there for 10 minutes until the 10 minutes is up. Because guess what? Now you completed the hour and now it counts. Um, so yeah, normally the, the first week can be quite tough. But as you go along, uh, what happens is, well, why should I do this routine today? Well, I did it yesterday. I managed to pull it off yesterday. So therefore I can do it today. So the more days you get under your belt, the greater confidence you have in completing your routine. Um, it becomes more of a habit. Um, so yeah, man, if people are looking at me, it's like, start sorting yourself out. Um, try to win the morning. If you win the morning, the rest of the day is more likely to, to go better. Uh, for me, that means going and going straight for a workout, uh, because it means if I've run 10 miles or if I've swam in the lake, that's quite a big obstacle for me. I found that tough. So now all of the stuff, all of the challenges I have coming up, they don't seem as big in comparison. So if I've done that in the morning, well, why can't I do this? Um, and then another technique, I've actually stolen this from Jordan Peterson, but um, something I realized I used to do is, let's say I have a, a, a long day of studying ahead of me. I don't want to think of this day as, oh, I have six hours ahead of studying. That's dreadful. That's overwhelming. Take it one hour at a time. Think of it as, let me get these three hours and then I have a lunch. Okay? Shorten the time frame. Um, focus on one day at a time. Even now, I don't want to think about all the times that, are, that I have to go and swim in the cold. No way. I do it every day. I don't want to think of what hundreds of times I'm going to do this. Nah, one morning at a time. And it's getting colder as well. The winter's mm. coming, man. <laughs> you know that saying from Game of Thrones, winter's coming. I feel <laughs> that to the core. Every single word, every single letter. Um, so yes, I recommend shortening the time frame. It can really help um, when you're going through a tough spot. Nice. It really feels you found your rhythm and you found your routine that suits you. But still, I'm asking, what is your what is your goal? What are the next oh, steps? So my personal goals. Okay. All right. So as I've mentioned before, I'm a student, computer science student. I have one more year left until I graduate. Um, normally, I didn't expect my social media to blow up this much at all, um, that quickly. I thought it would take me many years and I was prepared to wait for that. Um, but luckily, it just happened. Um, so before my plan was just to go into a normal software engineering job. Uh, now I kind of want to work on my brand, um, to start selling my products, etc. cetera. Um, so I've been coding part of my website, um, and hopefully I'll be able to get it done by the end of the academic year. So in terms of my like, uh, work life, I want to run my own company and I want to keep making videos. I don't know if. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull it off. I have no clue. I, I, I've done coding, etc., before, but I haven't done any business aspect of it. So I'm going to have a lot of things to learn. Probably going to fail many, many times, but it's okay. I'm not rich either. I don't have like a safety net. I live completely independently of my parents. I have a student loan given to me by the government and, um, I live off roughly 15,000 pounds per year. Not sure how much that is in dollars. Um, so I don't live a wealthy life. So if it goes, if it fails, I have to go live with my parents again and that'll be the end of that. Uh, but that, I'll definitely give that a shot. In terms of physical challenges, so one of the things, one of the people I will look up to is obviously David Goggins. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a guy I look up to a lot um, for three, four years now. Uh, but he has a challenge, the 4 by 4 by 48 So when I was doing my running, that's what I was preparing for. Um, which is, which is, the challenge is you run four miles every four hours for 48 hours. Um, 
So one of the challenges I wanted to do, eventually I do want to attempt some sort of world record, as I've mentioned before. Uh, so these are my physical goals. Um, and then I do want to achieve the 1000 pushups in one set as well. So that's another thing I'm working towards. Um, but apart from that, it's just, I don't know, wherever it takes me really, um, we'll see. Nice. That's super cool. I'm, I'm really looking forward to see this. Um, and I hope you will continue documenting it, uh, on, on social media and your journey. Uh, do you also do YouTube or is it, uh, which, which channels are you active on right now? So currently main channel is probably Instagram and TikTok. Uh, I also do YouTube as well. So I'm trying to get more of that. As I mentioned before, I do many other things from all this um, social media stuff. So it can be very difficult for me to balance everything. Um, so for YouTube videos, because it takes much longer to edit, I don't have that many coming out, but I will do um, eventually as I finish university. And even now I have some planned shoots that I'll be doing with other athletes. Um, and then, I mean, all my social media channels is just mask underscore media. So it's all the same everywhere. Um, so, yeah. I forgot to ask, what does mediator mean for you? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> I mean, when I was coming up with the name, I wanted it to be quite a unique name. Um, and um, I remember I was sitting on the kitchen, in the kitchen with my flatmate. Um, and we we're trying to come up with a name, um, mask something. We couldn't come up with the second, second part. Um, and I wanted kind of a slogan of beating the inner bitch inside you something along those lines and then um i remember the other one we were considering it was an masked intermediary i don't know why we wanted that name uh but it was one we were thinking of uh but at the end um we searched some synonyms and stuff um and we came across mediator and i quite liked it because um it reminded me of the word terminator uh, which i thought was cool <laughs> So I was like, all right, cool. Let me just stick with this one. Um, so I was like, yeah, mediating the, in a bitch to, this, to a path of discipline and strength. Um, so that's what yeah. it came down to. Interesting, because like, if, if I look up the, the Oxford languages uh, definition of mediator, it's a person who attempts to make people involved in a conflict come to an agreement. Yeah. Um, so it's the, <laughs> the complete opposite of Terminator. It's like, or like at least terminating a conflict. So terminating something... Um, yeah, destructive, but uh, yeah, I think mediator is a is a nice word because it, it shows uh, the the conflict, it shows the the solution and um, how how you use use it for you. Nice, mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, we're slowly coming to an end of the interview, and uh, yeah, I'm super grateful for you taking the time. Um, mm, in the in the beginning, I wanted to ask you what what do you think uh, will happen if if one day you will get leaked? Will it change something? <laughs> will you someday uh, change uh, like show your face uh, anyways from yourself? Or what will happen if you get leaked? Uh, is it a fear? Did you think about it? Doesn't doesn't matter. Yeah. So doing any any system it has vulnerabilities in it. So don't get me wrong. There are many vulnerabilities that I know of. Um, that there are ways that people can get to my identity. They simply exist. And in fact, I could, should, should tell you this story. There was this one girl that somehow, so she knew nothing. So this was a girl I met um, in my workplace. I work as a waiter part-time, uh, normally during the summer. Um, so we were interested in one another and we exchanged phone numbers. And, uh, and eventually we were texting. And um, at one point, so all she knew was, so she asked me at one point during our work, she was like, oh, do you work out? Oh, sorry, do you go gym? And I said, no. And then underneath my breath, I was like, I muttered like, oh, I do something else. And then she heard and she's like, oh, you do calisthenics. And I was like, quite surprised that she even knew what that was. Um, so she knew that. We talked about tattoos for a bit. And I mentioned that I have a tattoo on my chest. I didn't describe it at all. That was it. Um, and then um, when we were texting later, she mentioned that she tried to track she tried to stalk me on social media but she didn't find anything uh so i was like i do have social media but i'm anonymous that's the only thing she knew 
And then um, a couple of days later, she comes back and she sends me a screenshot of my account. And she's like, found you, babes. I'm like, what the fuck? It was nuts. Um, so she managed to find me with like no clues whatsoever. And she's not even into the sport that much. Um, I eventually, obviously, we talked about it with her, how she found it. And I patched that bit up uh, so that other people can't get through to me like that. Um, but there are definitely ways of people finding out. There are quite a few people that know. Currently, I don't tell anyone about it. Last person I told was my dentist. <laughs> um, he's a nice guy and I know he'll keep it private. Um, it's funny, I can go into this other story where I chipped my tooth from a muscle up. Um, so those are completely fake, my front two teeth, pretty oh. much. That's how I know the dentist. But um, if people find out, I don't think it'll be too much of a deal. Um, because let's say my real face gets leaked. Um, people will see it like once, but I don't think it would be enough for them to remember that face. Um, so I can still pretty much keep doing what I'm doing. Um, but I would, for now, I would prefer to keep it private. I enjoy my privacy. I don't want to be treated because people, they think when you have a high social media following, they think you're some celebrity, <laughs> they think you're rich, etc. But man, it's probably not the case. Like <laughs> I struggle to pay bills sometimes. Um, yeah, I don't make any money from it currently. Um, hopefully, eventually I will. But uh, yeah, it's a bit of a false perception. Interesting. You have to tell us the story of the of teeth. The tooth. Yeah, yeah. So no problem. So when I was 18, um, I just moved to my um, student accommodation. And obviously, as I think many calisthenics athletes do, whenever they go on holiday, or they go to a new spot, one of the first things they do, they go on that weird website or they go on Google Maps and they search up calisthenics parks near me. Uh, that's exactly what I did. Um, and I was doing a workout. I remember at the time I could barely do, uh, not barely, but I could do only a couple of muscle ups. Um, and the bar I was doing it on, it was quite thick and uncomfortable. But I, I was doing a couple of muscle ups and then um, I had overhead headphones on and on the way down, they kind of fell awkwardly off. So I snatched my, I put my knees out, my legs to catch them with my legs. And then as I went down, I just heard like a zing. I was like, the hell? I heard a zing. And then there was like white splashes coming out of my, uh, white dots coming out of my mouth. I was like, did I just chip my teeth? No way. And I feel, I, I try and feel the, the part with my, with my tongue. And there's just a gap. I'm like, what is going on? Because I didn't feel anything. There was no pain. There was nothing. And then I go on my phone and um, I see that, yeah, like half, <laughs> both of my front two teeth, like the halves are just missing. Um, it's just the way I went down on the muscle up, it was like an aw awkward angle. And I think my mouth must have been open. So it just uh, knocked them out. Um, and normally, on a normal day, um, I would be like, okay, cool. And I just go back to the workout. <laughs> but because I was going through this, like moving houses, making new friends, I was a bit more unstable. So I was like, oh shit. I remember I called out my friend. I was like, bro, I think I just knocked out my teeth. Like, what do I do? Um, but eventually I took like a five minute break and I got back and completed my workout. Um, and then um, my parents were kind enough to pay for a private dentist to sort the teeth out. Um, so very nice guy, my dentist, he sorted it out and when he was complete, it looked like my teeth were better after than they were before I chipped them. So mm -hmm. I was like, man, I should have, I should have knocked all of my teeth out. This guy <laughs> did such a good job. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how it happened. Like I've, I've had, I've left, you know how in Pirates of the Caribbean, I think there's a scene where some of the crewmates, they grow into the ship and they become part of the ship. It's like, I'm the same, but it's like my tooth, had, my teeth had been left at the park. My calluses, my skin, my blood has sometimes been smeared on the, on the bar when there's a lot of blood. Um, I'm part, I'm, I'm growing into the park. I'm part of the park, basically. <laughs> I'm leaving everything out there. <laughs> nice. Yeah, crazy. So, yeah. Um... 
it was super interesting to get to know more about you and your mission, your vision, your goals, your mentality, your routines. And uh, yeah, it was super, super nice. Thank you for taking the time. And uh, yeah, is there anything you want to tell to the community? Anything uh, like, like the, the word to end this episode is, is for you? The end of the episode is go and do your fucking push-ups. That's it. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Then, uh, yeah, thanks for your time. And, uh, yeah. Thank you we'll for having touch. me. <laughs>